come back to that's oh, entertainment with, with Brenton and uh, Jared. Um, and that was the uh, Young Doctors theme song that we just played then. Very from funky. From I 1982. Say. Even had a little little segment in there, yes, yeah, mm. so, uh, an announcement. And the reason we played that is because we have Lisa Aldenhoven. Have I pronounced that correctly, Lisa? Aldenhoven. Aldenhoven. Yes, Fantastic. Correct. Now, Lisa, you played, of course, you played a nurse Julie Holland in The Young Doctors, didn't you? I did, I did. So I uh, came in as Peter Holland's little sister, mm-hmm. and then they introduced a another Holland, um, Robert Lee, played Mark Holland. He came in a little bit later. Okay. Now uh, the reason we're we, we're interview and no, we. Our station, of course, has interviewed a few of your uh, fellow cast members uh, uh, through the week already is because uh, The Young Doctors is having a big DVD launch uh, this week. In fact, it was released yesterday on DVD, the first 250 episodes, uh, which was uh, um, uh, 35 discs in that uh, in that compilation. So that's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to, to, to see that. But um, uh, now... Th- yeah, I was watching I, I, before the show today, Lisa. I was watching an episode. It was a very sad episode. Something happened to you just before you said I do. Yes, that's the. Um, I was I was about to get married, and in the um, fortunately, I was getting married in the hospital in the Albert Memorial Hospital Chapel because my fiance's sister-in-law who had been in an asylum escaped when she heard that uh, her brother-in-law was getting married and she was secretly in love with him so she um, made her way to the chapel and snuck in at the back right as we were as you correctly said we're about to say I do well he said I do but you didn't get to say that I didn't get to say that. She pulled a gun out of her handbag. Oh. Uh, My younger brother, Mark, who hadn't, who actually wasn't even going to come to the wedding because he didn't approve of my fiancé, he saw the gun, knocked it as she pulled the trigger, and instead of, because she wanted to, as I say, shoot her brother-in-law because she felt that if she couldn't have him no one could and the gun went off and it got me in the left lung instead of my fiance so fortunately because we were getting married in the hospital chapel they were able to rush me into emergency and dr forrest came to the rescue and actually saved me so i didn't die Mm. Oh, that was good. See, I haven't seen past there, you see. I watched that episode. I'm like, oh, I need to know and what you happened. Thought, oh, my goodness. That was that uh, uh, episode eight, 832 or something like that. <laughs> Whoa. Yes, yes. And it was, um, it was written to be the Christmas cliffhanger. Uh, but, and so the nation would have been like you, thinking that Julie Holland had mm. died. Mm. However... For some reason, they um, they got the dates wrong, and so the the continuation of the story actually went to air the following week instead of three months later. Mm. Okay. But anyway, I, I did survive. My mother uh, and family decided that Russell clearly wasn't the right person for me, so they told him to get out of my life, and he did. So when I regained consciousness uh which took about four or four episodes for me to recover from being shot in the left lung but anyway um and i came to and my fiance was nowhere to be seen so i then went into a deep depression and decided that the only solution was to start hanging out in king's cross so little julie holland the sweet innocent beautiful young lady that she was then started hanging out in King's Cross and one night um, Dr. Forrest, Alan Dale who had saved my life on the operating table 
came looking for me, found me in a compromising position in some seedy bar. I looked up and saw him, was highly embarrassed, ran out of the bar and across the road. Dr. Forrest followed me, got hit by a car, broke his wrist and never operated again. Mm-hmm. So... It was it was tragic, but then he he you know, we both continued in the show, so that was fine. Mm. But that was and that was Alan Dale who played Jim Jim Robinson in Neighbours. Yes, yes, yes that's correct. Well, I I uh, I met uh, I actually worked with Alan uh, in Neighbours from 1987 through to 19, uh, 1990. Um, I I was at well. I don't know if I was actually in any scenes with him. I was supposed to be, but, uh, well, the story went that him and um, I think it was Paul Robinson uh, were both yes. handcuffed um, to a uh, post in the middle of their lounge room uh, mm-hmm. so they couldn't make it to the um, uh, to a, uh, a charity event that they were supposed to attend that I was actually at. I was I played a high school student in, um, in uh-huh. Neighbours. Uh, I played a character called Adam. But I understand that you're in Neighbours now. Is that right? Oh, look, I did a guest role. Oh. I did a guest role um, recently, uh, but it wasn't it, it wasn't a continuing role. Oh, okay. So, uh, but it was wonderful being being on the set of Neighbours and of course it's shot at Channel 10 Mm -hmm. which is where they shot Prisoner Okay, we're back online, sorry about that folks we just uh, lost power for a moment there was a very quick flash blackout here in Rockingham and it just kind of uh, put a a stall on everything and we were in the middle of a great interview with Lisa, Lisa are you still there? I am still here. Fantastic. I do apologise for that, Lisa. Very unprofessional of me, wasn't it? <laughs> um, well, look, look. I'm in Melbourne, and of course, we're we're, we're having blackouts all over all over the state at the moment. So. Oh. I feel sorry for you actually being in Melbourne. Well, Melbourne's Melbourne's a beautiful state, a, a, a beautiful city, but I feel sorry for everyone in Melbourne at the moment. My family's over there, my father, my brothers, everyone, they're all over there, my daughters. Um, and unfortunately, because of COVID, I haven't even been able to uh, see them. Um, every time I wanted to go over there, something would happen and we couldn't something get Something else happened. Yeah, yeah no, it's been a tough, a tough 12 months, but hmm. what is what I have really enjoyed is the community spirit and I know it's a cliched overused term we're all in this together but on the whole uh, apart from some sections of the media and and some quarters ever it's kind of like we have no choice we've just got to do the right thing by each other yeah. and the Life in the on the streets and and just seeing what fam. I've got a little park at the the end of my street, and I have never seen it as well used as it has been in the last twelve months. It's just been lovely seeing families out there every afternoon, mm. and you know dads with their kids that I have never seen before. <laughs> it's, so there have been quite a lot of positives, but of course for small business owners it's been very very tough yes yes my father told me uh, about businesses that during you know the, a year ago they closed down and they just never reopened um, yes yeah it's been it's been a big struggle for um, small businesses everywhere worldwide um, so, oh yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah but we're supposed to be talking about something really exciting, and that is, for those of you who might have just tuned in, um, uh, that is the fact that uh, the Young Doctors, which uh, ran from 19... Let me just make sure I've got this right. 1970... 1976, was it? Yes, 1976 till um, uh, 1983. So that's... I mean, that was that's staggering. It was a... It was a, a long-running show 
Um, and that was the Grundy organization, of course, uh, run uh, piloted by uh, Reg Grundy. Um, but that was uh, uh, released, the first 250 episodes were released yesterday on DVD, uh, which um, I guess you can get them from JB Hi-Fi, you can probably get them from uh, uh, um, Sanity Records. and um Yes, and, and you can also buy it online mm -hmm. um, through the, uh, Vision Entertainment. Vision Entertainment, fantastic. Yes. I'm really looking at and it, I'm looking forward to it because, I, I mean, I was a kid when Young Doctors came out, but I actually enjoyed it. Um, I was... Uh, when did it come out? 19... What did I say? 1976. 76. 76. So I was only six when it came out. Right. But by then I'd already... You know, earlier than that, I'd already been sneaking vision... Uh, you know, sneaking looks at uh, uh, shows like Number 96, which came out the uh, late late 60s, very early 70s. Um, so, you know, Number 96 sort of... Uh, got me into uh <laughs> into, into trouble. In, 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 yes a lot of <laughs> trouble but it got me into the into soap operas and uh uh and young doctors was was one of them um there were quite a few there was prisoner which you were saying how you were in the first episode of that and you hung just uh, hanged yourself in the uh before the third um television commercial um and was of course, well of course young doctors was on at six o'clock um at the time channel nine commissioned the sullivans from mm. crawford's and young doctors from Grunties, and it was they they had a slot they had to fill so they were going to choose between the two which one would would last and both went to air and both were hugely pop popular and mm. so they ended up commissioning both series which was just wonderful mm. that, that we had and Crawford's was just pumping out so much drama and then you know Grundy's too with with Prisoner and Young Doctors and and they started producing things so there was it was it was a great time in television for actors because there was there was so much so much being made and young doctors was it was lovely it was apart from me getting shot at the altar but it was on the whole very wholesome good storylines and very entertaining and in about 10 years ago i was needing work and i ended up getting a job as a pharmaceutical rep calling on GPs talking about various drugs and I went to a clinic and this doctor sort of walked in and we were chatting away and then he said I know you don't I know what no I don't think so mm -hmm. and he went on he said no, I'm, I'm sure I know you anyway it of course Eventually, it came out that I, I said, well, you know, I used to be a nurse. He said, that must be it. I remember you. And then I, said, oh, well, you know, I was a nurse on Young Doctors. And he looked at me and he said, oh, you're Julie Holland. I used to love, you're the reason I became a doctor. Oh, oh wow. that's nice. That's sweet. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He said he used to run home from school. He was uh, quite a bit younger than me. Um and watch Young Doctors every night. And I, I've had that a few times. And another time, um, not long after I'd finished in Young Doctors, it, it was no longer on air, a couple of years after it, it had gone off air. But my husband at the time um, was quite ill and we had to rush into the Elford Hospital and in the middle of the night on a Saturday night and we're in emergency and he's lying on the bed in agony and a doctor comes in and of course because it was the middle of the night I just chucked on clothes. I actually, I'm, I normally wear contact lenses but I have my glasses on my hair was greasy, I looked a mess, I had no makeup on, and this doctor comes in he, and he looked at me and he said, I know you, and I'm like, no, you don't. Are you a nurse? And I went, no. And then John, through gritted teeth, said, she used to be in young doctors. <laughs> and this doctor looked at me and I said, please, just, he said, really? I, and I went, 
just look after my husband. Um, <laughs> next week, we have every doctor, every nurse in emergency at the Alfred coming into our cubicle. We got the best service imaginable. Um, but, yeah, people, people who just love the show. Yeah. And our followers, our fans were so loyal. It was wonderful. It was a great time. Yeah. But you, you also played a nurse in a film, didn't you? I, d I, I, I did. I did indeed. I was in the first Mad Max film. That's right. Now, were I you? I went to a nurse stage, and um, I used to get, I used to get cast as a nurse a fair <laughs> bit. So I was in, I was in Mad Max. Were you the one who? Are you the the nurse in Mad Max that says we lost the child? We lost the kid. D O A. That was you. Yes, um, that was me. Yeah. That was me, and I. And again, because what happened was I had, uh, when I finished um, secondary school, my Christmas holiday job was as an extra on The Getting of Wisdom, mm -hmm. which was just the most glorious six weeks of my life. I just, I couldn't believe my luck. It was a period drama, so um, myself and, and two other girls who were the, the sort of featured extras you know, we'd go there every day and get dressed in all these fabulous costumes and you know, any shot where they needed another another face in the in the background, they'd just shove us in. And Kerry Armstrong, who who I've known since state school I know Kerry. was in the show and anyway, twelve months later I'm walking I'll be working at the Herald as a cadet. I was walking through the city one lunchtime and I bumped into Kerry and she was going off to a, a job and she's like, oh, what have you done since getting a wisdom? And I had to say nothing. So I marched back to the office and started ringing around agents and one said, come and see me. And she, while I was sitting across her desk, picked up the phone and rang Crawford's who were uh, auditioning for Cop Shop and Grundy's who were auditioning for Prisoner and said I've got someone you need to see so I went off and auditioned for both of those and got the sort of guest role in, in both opening episodes and then before I did that I got this part in Mad Max and it was we were shooting out at Box Hill Hospital or somewhere and I got a taxi from the from the city and arrived on location and met George Miller, the director, and I think the line was, he's been standing there like a, a catatonic all day, and they lost the kid, DOA. And I'm reading this, and I thought, and I didn't know what the word catatonic meant, and I didn't know what DOA meant. So I, I had to ask the director, <laughs> I was very embarrassed, but anyway, that was um, that was my day, and and I still don't quite understand why why Mel Gibson took his career took off after that film, and mine didn't. <laughs> but anyway, it's probably the fact that I only had two lines, <laughs> but they were pretty memorable, I must say. Uh, but the uh, yeah. I did that. yeah. So I'm, I'm just having a look at your IMDb right now, and of, uh -huh. course, of course, Neighbours, you played Leslie Taylor in Neighbours um, yes. uh, a couple of years ago. You did Offspring, um, yes. Rush, uh, Shortcuts, Brilliant Lies, Death of a Soldier in 86, Carson's Law, Special Squad. Now, I have to admit, I don't remember Special Squad. Um, <laughs> Uh, Special Squad was a police drama, mm -hmm. and in that I played I played a murder victim, and the uh, the the opening scene because with as as you would know having having done some work on Neighbours that um, you, they do all the location uh, scenes one week and then they do they come back the following week and do the studio stuff mm -hmm. normally. So, which in this case meant we did the last scene first, which was me being dragged out of the Yarra River as a corpse. And so I had to lie on the bank of the Yarra River 
and with my legs in the water and get dragged up the bank, take after take after take. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't envy you. And I, know, I don't and envy you. I know that river. Had, <laughs> yes. And the makeup artist had to keep coming over, running over, because I think it was a hot day and I was in pain because they're dragging me up the, up the river bank. And she had to keep coming over and putting this sort of grey, dead makeup on my face so that I looked dead. And on my hand, you know, any parts of my body that was exposed, and of course, because I was in the water, so it kept getting washed off. So I just had this. It was like, um, not plaster of Paris, but the, you know, like this grey putty almost that she was smearing all over me, so that so that I looked dead. Um, but yes, yeah, so that that was special squad. Okay. Um, now, what's your favourite? memory from um, from the Young Doctors. We'll get back to the Young Doctors. What's your favourite memory from that? Look, I think I mean, for me it was getting, it was getting cast. <laughs> it was you know, I was just this little kid from the from the suburbs who had a dream about being an actor and you know, I had done a couple of guest roles and I'd done Mad Max and getting a wisdom, but getting that call saying they want they want to write you in as a regular in Young Doctors was amazing. And I I didn't know Sydney at all. I flew to Sydney. I was staying in North Sydney. You've got the Harbour Bridge, Luna Park, and then walking around the corner to the the studio. It was just. It was just amazing. And then the lovely thing about it, everyone was so kind and so friendly and you walk into the makeup room and my makeup artists are just are like your mum. Yeah. And we had uh, Viv Neffam who was just the most fabulous woman. Um, and then I ha uh, hairdresser was, was a initially was a, a great lady and then she she left to do something else and we had pat hutchins came in who was michael Hutchins' mother and she was our hairdresser okay. and she was hilarious and i remember one day she not long after she she started she showed me a photo and she said oh my son's in a rock band and and maybe you'd like to meet him and i remember looking at this photo thinking what that pimply faced runt because <laughs> as an 18 year old Michael Hutchins was very skinny and had quite bad skin mm. and it wasn't until I then saw him performing a few months later and I thought oh my god yeah he is he's amazing but I don't actually think I would have been his type looking at the sort of women that he did go out with um so that was great fun. The crew were were just were always good. We had this as as time went on, they got a little bit more sophisticated. And there was one day where uh, we, we, I was doing a scene with Alan Dale, Doctor Forrest, and it was in the utilities room. And we had we were washing. I was washing instruments. And the guys were very excited because they'd actually rigged up the tap so that I could stand there and turn the tap on and it would fill the trough and I was, you know, washing bedpans or whatever and talking to Dr. Forrest and so we did take a couple of times and we're coming in for, we're, we're now going to record and I thought, I know, what do you do when you finish washing stuff up? You take the plug out. Oh no. So at the end, of the year, as we're going through the scene and I pull the plug out, well of course the the sink hadn't been wasn't plumbed. Oh, no. It just emptied straight onto the floor, all over our shoes, all... <laughs> and you and you just hear from the van cart. So um, yeah, I I wasn't allowed to pull the plug out again after that. And then of course we this was also at the time of World Series cricket, which is relevant because. They used our in-studio cameras at the cricket. 
So we used to rehearse two episodes on a Monday. We'd shoot those on the Tuesday. Wednesday, we'd rehearse three episodes, shoot them over Thursday, Friday. But once the cricket started, those cameras had to be in trucks by about three o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Mm. So we just, there was no time for retakes or you just, you had to get it right. And everything, it was so rushed. It was hilarious. You'd go rushing through scenes and the next thing, all the cameras would just disappear. And so that was, that was a wrap for the day. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a bit different these days, isn't it? Uh, when, yes. you're, when you're doing TV or film or whatever, you, you film until you get it right, and then they do another oh, another couple of takes after that. You know, you know you've done it perfectly. Yes. And they yes. turn around and they say, oh, no, we'll do another couple of takes. Oh, God. You know, because by the time... I mean, people who are not in the industry don't realise just how much hard work there is in being an actor. Um, whether it's a TV show or a movie or whatever. Um, but it's a lot of hard work, isn't it? Oh, it is. Look, I, I did a um, film, it was a student film, that, which I did recently. And it was one scene, and, I mean, they were they were incredibly professional and, mm. and um, very slick. But I think what people, what people don't, realize is that that every cut is a different isn't is a different camera setup i mean different on young doctors where it's video so they're actually switching and they're using three cameras but say in film where you're only using one camera so you have to you shoot each scene with the camera on close up on the individual actors then you do a wide shot of the whole thing and you do an over over the shoulder shot for the people on one side of the table and then back the other way so one scene could be 20 different camera setups mm. depending on how many people are in it so and the other thing with doctors that was always again early days and not as sophisticated as things are now but the flats because of course it's all done in studios so and each room, you know, depending on the angle that they're shooting from, is depends how many walls that they build for, for that particular scene. But of course, nothing's solid. So you could never slam a door because the walls would shake. And sometimes if you were doing a scene that was heated or you're having an argument with someone and you stormed out and you forgot and you slammed the door, it'd be cut because everything would start wobbling and often would fall over mm. Mm. so you, you had to be mindful of that and then the crew went through a stage where they had a plastic parrot and they would hide it on set for each scene and you'd open a drawer and next thing this parrot would pop out or <laughs> you'd, yeah, you'd, be, you'd be in a very serious discussion with Matron and then you'd look over her shoulder at the bookcase and they're poking out of the out of the <laughs> A to Z of skeletons would be this sort of little wing or a claw or a beak and it'd be like guys <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, but yeah, we yeah. had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun and we had some great actors come through the cast. Yeah. Um yeah, you know, it sounds like, like it, it sounds like you had a lot of fun. Different. Sorry? It sounds like you had a lot of fun with that one. Oh, sorry, that's my, my dog is barking in the background. Uh, we, it was great fun. It was it was just a really happy... It's a bit sad when you think that your career highlight is when you're 20 years of age. But anyway, um, it, was, it was lovely. It was a really, really lovely time. Yeah. And I... I'm just thrilled that it's now coming out on DVD. I mean, it, there was a, a period where we had a there was an act, a nationwide actors strike, and mm -hmm. it was over because you know, contracts are fairly standard in terms of you know the basic wording. Obviously, people have individual money clauses and all sorts of things, but the the question of residuals came up because one of the series at the time was looking at doing some overseas sales and of course that hadn't because no one had considered that Australian 
dramas would be sold overseas. Mm. So there wasn't a clause in the con in the kind of universal contract for residuals. And so, um, you know, each show had different negotiations. And I, and I remember at the time we were offered either sort of money up front just in case or they'd build in a sort of an additional fee for overseas sales. And I, I think, and we, of course, all took the money up front because I don't think anyone ever believed that young doctors would be sold overseas. But it was, and then, and now, of course, now that it's all coming out on DVD, it's, it, it's um, we certainly didn't anticipate that at the time. Yeah, because you'd, because um, you'd be eligible for, uh, for revenue now is on DVD, I'm sure. Um, uh, no, no, because that I don't believe so, because that that wasn't in our contract. Oh. Um, but it, it, you know. It doesn't matter. We were we were well paid at the time, so it's fine. And of course, what I need the um, it, at this stage, it's just the first two hundred and fifty episodes, so I'm not actually in them. I know uh, because I came in after after uh, two hundred and fifty episodes. I came in in seventy nine. Mm. So hopefully, if this. Um, the initial release goes well, then they'll bring out the rest of the series. On I certainly TV. hope so because I'd really like to watch the, the the whole series. I'm one of these I'm one of these guys who who likes to binge watch everything. So yes. I would sit there if they were if they were to release the entire thing, I would sit there uh, with each volume. I mean, there's 35 discs in this this one they just released yesterday. 250 episodes. 35 discs. Of course, the first yes. episode being the pilot was an hour, and everything else yep. was half an hour. Um, so I would sit there and I would binge. I'd, it'd last me a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't get much sleep, but it'd last me a week. <laughs> so tell me, you said that you did Neighbours. Did I did you? Neighbours. I was a character called Adam. It wasn't, it, you know, I never even got credited. Um, it was so disappointing. My name was never in the credits, but it was a ah. it, it was a, it was a recurring speaking role. Um, yep. I was one of the students at Erinsborough High, so I was there when Guy Pearce and um, uh, Annie Jones and, um, yeah, and uh, Jason uh, Donovan. Jason, Don oh, Jason Donovan was such a nice guy. I loved working with him. Kylie Minogue, of course. I was there when they yep. were when they were students. And um, uh, such a great experience working with them. I was there for three years. I was, I was, you know, from 1987 through 1990. I was a recurring character, just not a regular character. And my my name never even got into the credits. It really disappointed me. But uh, since then, of course, I've done films like uh, or uh, projects like um, the uh, the Legend of Ben Hall. I was I was uh, I played a magistrate in that Magistrate Rose. Um, yeah. And, and uh, I don't know if you've seen that. That was a great film, and a few other things. Uh, I, I direct more than anything nowadays. So I, I direct uh, community theatre, and I direct, and I, and I write and direct movies and things like that. So, <laughs> uh, but I, I just love the industry. I've been in the industry now since I was ten. I'm, I'm now fifty-one. So forty-one years I've been in this industry, yeah. and I just love it. Just love it. It's, it's I, I was talking to. Um, an actor the other day that's in a, a stage show that I'm directing and um, I said now you're in it I said you're never going to get out of it I said it'll be in your blood for the rest of your life because I think it is you know well I I started um, one of our neighbours was the first female presenter on play school mm -hmm. and whenever she needed kids we'd all get rounded up and taken up to the Ripley Lee Studios and we would be on play school. And it, well, I just used to think it was so magical. I, and then I joined an amateur theatre group when I was about 12 mm -hmm. and did that for six, six or seven years. And they had a juniors and a seniors. And whenever they needed... Um, was this in Melbourne? A young, yes, the Bo Morris Players. I know the Bo Morris Players. I actually helped build their set for um, uh, uh, I Love You, You're Perfect, Now Change, which was, uh, I'm going to say, about 10 years ago. Um, 
uh, might might have been a little less than ten years ago. But yeah, Bo Morris players, I I, uh, I know them. I actually auditioned for a show for them, but uh, uh, they were doing a cabaret show and. Uh, yep. They wanted an MC, and I auditioned to be an MC because I, I'm also a magician and, so, and comedian, and and they oh. uh, uh, they ended we should up. should be interviewing you <laughs> rather than interviewing me. But they ended up doing uh, changing the the concept of the show instead of doing a variety because I was the only variety act that showed up for auditions. Everyone else was just singers. <laughs> they decided they were just going to do the the songs, and I was like, okay, so you really enjoyed my audition, but you're not giving me a role. I was really really hurt by them. <laughs> but well, yeah, I used to, um, you know, I, I'd be I'd be there every week and then, as I say, I'd be in the seniors in those days. We, there were a lot of um, English actors who, you know, who'd done rep theatre in England who were living in Beaumaris because Beaumaris was quite an arty um, suburb in those days and it was it, i learned so much working with those people it was just it was wonderful absolutely wonderful and so so to go from the amateur theater like that to being written into young doctors was i just couldn't get my head around it yeah it no, was it's, it's, i mean i i did I, um i did amateur theater before i got into neighbors as well and it is it's it's kind of startling and back then it was um i, th I think back then getting into a uh, a soap opera was more exciting than it would be these days i think i could be wrong it's been a while since i've done a soap opera but i think i, I, I think it was especially when you're young i think it's really exciting i get asked a lot by by uh, uh, uh beginner actors these days Oh, Brenton, um, how do I get into a soap opera? Can you get me into Neighbours? You know, <laughs> and yep. you know, it's it's like, well, you need to get an agent. You need to get some experience. Get get something behind you, and then and then apply when they're looking for someone. And get uh, it was because um, back back when I got onto Neighbours, I just wrote to the uh, I think it was Crawfords who who ran it back then. Um, mm. I wrote to Crawfords, and they gave me an audition. But the uh, nowadays you need to go onto a website. I think it's um, uh, showcase. Is it showcase? Show showcast. Well, there's showcast, and then there's casting networks That's where right. you can put up a put your, your profile up. But what I would recommend to any aspiring actor mm -hmm. is um, there is a casting director called Greg Apps. And I know Greg Apps. He uh, he was directing a few years back. He was directing um, the remake of Gallipoli. Right. Well, he and he was an actor. He 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 was a guest. Was in Young Doctors for for a while as well. Mm -hmm. But he now has, um, as well as still being a very um, active casting director, he does what's called the audition technique and it's on Facebook and Instagram and he runs online courses about how to audition mm -hmm. because I think you know what and particularly now because so so many auditions now are done as self tapes where you literally set up a camera your, your iPhone on a tripod at home and you get sent a script and you film yourself doing that doing that audition and then you send it off to a, off to the casting agent and you may or may not get a call back mm. and he what he does is teaches you how to audition to be and how to be different mm. because you you know because when now particularly now because so much of it's done online um, you need to stand out. Can, you need to stand out, and they can be getting dozens and dozens and dozens of submissions for each part, and they literally do not have time to look at them all. That's right. They will look at the first first you know ten seconds, twenty seconds, and if you're interesting, they'll keep watching, and if you're not, they move on. Mm. So this you've is... got to. 
yeah, because I, I teach acting every Thursday night here in Perth, and, I, and I've said to, uh, to my students, I said, you have to stand out. If you're going to audition for something, you need to stand out. And I keep referring to the old soap commercial. You know, so many people, you know, it's bar of soap. I use Kame, I use Kame, I use Kame. And every, uh, every audition would be exactly the same. You know, the, they'd look at the, the bar of soap and they'd say, I use whatever the soap is, and lift yeah. it up. And I said, not one of those people, unless they were, you know, unless they had a specific look, not one of them would get a role because they were all exactly the same. I said, you've got to stand out. And so to teach them, I'd, I'd say, what do you do if you're doing a commercial like that? And I'd use the Kame bar as the... I think you can still get Kame soaps. Um, but I'd, I'd say, you take the soap and, and you'd give it a smell and go, mmm, I use Kame. And, you know, do that little sultry voice. And all that. that stands out. I was, directi- yep. I was directing a movie and I was auditioning a, a, a lady. Now, I was playing a cameo as a, as a bank manager in this particular movie that I was directing. It was only a small role, and I couldn't, I couldn't justify giving it to, a, to another act of being such a very small role, maybe three lines. So I was playing that role, and I had just... In this, in this particular scene, I, was, uh, I had just berated one of the um, existing... Uh, staff members, a, a, a bank teller, for having toy car on her uh, computer or something, and I said to her, uh, you know, and I tell her off. I say, you know, this is a, a bank, not a toy store. Get rid of all that. I've told you before. Get rid of all that crap. And I then turn to a new bank teller who's coming on board, and the first bank teller is supposed to um, uh, give a gesture behind my back. You know, they're, they're flipping the bird. It's called, mm-hmm. and. Um, every every actress I auditioned would do exactly the same move. You know, th- they just lift their middle finger. And it, um, then I had uh, this one actress, wonderful actress, and she did that. And then she started pulling faces, and she mimed pulling pants down and doing all sorts of things. And when I turned around, she just went back to doing whatever she was doing, br- yep. brushing her hair or something. And um, when I watched the footage back, she got the role because she stood out, you know. Yes. And that's what I keep saying to them: you've got to stand out in your audition. You can't just go on and and walk in and go uh, do exactly what is written, because every other person is doing exactly what is written. Mm. So mm. you know, um, but yeah. So what, what have you been do? What have you done since Neighbours? Because you did your Neighbours in 2018. What have you done since then? Oh, well, I've actually, well, I, if we rewind even further back, I mean, after I finished in Young Doctors, mm-hmm. I then did quite a few guest roles in, in various shows, and I moved back to Melbourne, and I worked in um, production, so I worked for Cambridge Films, they, they made The Man from Snow River and The Anzacs were the mm-hmm. two big, big things, and, and I was casting and location managing and all sorts of things on mainly on commercials then i got into pr to basically through my journalism um, experience and ended up back at herald and weekly times as marketing manager when they launched the sunday herald so Mm -hmm. i did that for about 10 years and then freelance for another 10 years and then i was working as the pharmaceutical rep and so I, I was in the corporate world and really wasn't pursuing acting very much at all. And then circumstances changed and I got the party neighbours and there, there was some talk about it becoming a regular role and I was sick of my job anyway, so I quit and then it didn't become a regular role, so that was a bit disappointing. But <laughs> so now I'm... Um, Basically, I freelance. I've got a little house on here now down at Skins Creek um, on the Great Ocean Road, which is on Airbnb. So I, I'm back and forth to Melbourne a lot with that and auditioning and, you know, just, just doing little bits and pieces as they come up. Um, so I haven't sort of done anything major. Well, I did do, which was very interesting last year, 
Uh, oh, oh. Um, the true history of the Kelly gang. Oh, yeah. When once that had completed filming, my agent rang up this one day and said, oh, are you interested in doing a loop group for this film? And I said, yeah, of course, you'd yeah, love to. Hung up the phone and thought, what the hell is a loop group? And so I quickly Googled it and finally found reference. In America, it's, it's, a, it's an industry. There are actors who just specialise in doing a loop group. And do you know what I'm talking about when I, I say a loop group? I've no idea, but let me Google it. <laughs> Not, well, I'll, and I'll tell you. Me, I'll tell you. So, as we, we were talking before about when you, you're shooting a scene and how they have to do shoot it from every single angle, but um, just say we're, we're doing a scene in a bar and there's sort of three people sitting at the bar chatting. Mm -hmm. All those people in the background and all that noise in the background is not actually being mic'd. Oh, they just, of course, the of course. are just on the three principles. Yes. So what they do in America in big budget films is they then bring actors in after the after the film is shot, after it's been edited, and they sort of look where the holes are in the dialogue, and. So, in, so they'll, they will play these scenes and they've got these actors in a studio, in a sound studio, and they provide the dialogue, the background dialogue, yeah. which you just make up. So I turned up to this sound studio and there was about 12 of us and the director was there and you know, the first scene was, was a scene in a brothel where Ned, you know, walking into a brothel and all these women are up in their in their little booths calling out trying to attack the, attract attention and so they play the scene and then they say okay you you come up to the mic start talking and you just have to make stuff up about being in a brothel trying to attract customers or being in a bar or there was a, a fight scene where we had to be cheering and barracking and, and I was really concerned when I when I went along because I was thinking it's all going to have to be Irish oh I, I had no idea what a what we had to say or whether it had to be Irish accents or what it was going to be but with that film it was kind of it was contemporary so it was no it was just Australian accents and contemporary language so and he wanted us to swear and he wanted us to scream and at one stage um, when we're doing the brothel scene, uh, the director said to me, "Okay, I want you to, you know, this this guy's a he, what he's refusing to pay, and so you've got to tell him that he was a dud customer anyway, and you're insulting him." So I start insulting this non-existent bloke, and he said, "Okay, now I want you to sing it." Now, there are very few things that I can't do. Singing is definitely on the top of the list. I oh, cannot I... tune and I can't. I don't even sing happy birthday at birthday parties because I just can't. And I looked and I thought, oh my God, you really want me to sing? And he said, yeah, 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 you know, just sing it. So I said, <laughs> okay. Okay, I will start singing, and then you'll say cut. And I started singing, and I was just a making up a tune, making up words, and looking at the director, waiting for him to sort of give me the cut sign. But he he was giving me the sort of you know louder, 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 bigger, bigger, and I <laughs> I'm just kind of screaming this song at the top of my lungs. And, and then there was a cheering scene, and, and one of my superpowers is wolf whist whistling with, you know, with my fingers. Uh -huh. And he wanted me to whistle, and I'm like, are you sure? Because I'm really loud. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to whistle. It was, it, was it was one of the best days I've ever had 
in a studio. It was fantastic fun. So from now on, I'm, I want to put myself down as a loop group specialist because it's really good work. Yeah, yeah I, I, did a, I did do a, a loop group once, but I didn't realise that's what it was called. And uh, it was one of my first um, first gigs. Um, uh, and it was a party scene, and we were sitting in the kitchen after we'd, we'd filmed all the all the the principal photography. And we're sitting in the kitchen afterwards. They said, "Oh, we want you people to, and, you know, just to talk amongst yourselves." They didn't say, you know, they didn't use the term loop group. They just need you to talk amongst yourselves and just uh, so we've got some background noise. And um, the, you know, we were all talking, and you know, I was still very new to professional acting, and they and they were like, oh, you know, some of them were, were swearing the f bomb was dropped, and and all sorts, yeah. of, and I'm just mouthing to the to the boom operator, going, you can't use any of this, <laughs> because uh, somehow they they worked it out, you know, they did it all, in, it's, it'll be all right in posters, they always say. But uh, <laughs> it was just yeah, one of those yeah. things. I was like, "Well, you can't use any of this." It was all swearing. I'm like, "Oh," but yeah, um, it was interesting. Oh, we, well, we actually at the t- it actually coincided with me uh, splitting up from my partner, and so of course I was channeling. And I am not someone who gets angry and yells at people, but I was channeling all that anger and disappointment and towards my ex as I'm standing there in the studio and and so when when he was saying you know, be angry or you know tell him what you really think I just went for it and my agent sort of later that the next day rang and <laughs> and he said, "How did you like doing that?" And I said, "Oh, you know, it was great. I loved it." But and and he said, "The director said you were a standout." <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's just that that magical world that obviously you know what I'm talking about. I did I a do. commercial last year, and just a right. It was you know in a house in Essendon and just walking down the street and the first thing I saw was the lighting van and I just sort of stood at the back of the lighting van looking and I you know, I love how neat it always is and every every single thing that you can imagine is all there and labelled and it was I was I was happy at, I could have gone home happy at that moment yeah. just from seeing the lighting van you know <laughs> it's just it's wonderful. It's a wonderful profession if you're lucky enough to to get work. And unfortunately, um, you know, a lot of people a lot of people start out, and and not many people are successful. No, I know it's it's very hard sometimes to get paid work. And uh, I I ask um, my students when I'm when I'm when they first come on board. Uh, for my acting lessons, and I do the same with with those who just you know who audition for me as well. I'd say, you know, why do you want to be an actor if they haven't done it before? Why do you want to be an actor? Um, nine out of ten times, it's for fame or money, and I'm like, yeah. mm, nah. wrong industry, because you yeah. you know, unless you um, you know you, you're not going to be famous overnight, and you're not going to definitely not going to be rich overnight. Mm-hmm. You know, mm. you, uh, I mean, okay, we've got our Mel Gibsons and so forth who have gone on to uh, uh, to make huge blockbuster movies. And, of course, because they were A-list celebrities and they were able to, uh, they're able to actually demand their, you know, their mm. own fees and they can ask for, you know, a million dollars just to get out of bed on the morning. But, you know, um, it's not one of these things that, you, you, you're not going to get rich and famous overnight, and this is why I keep saying to them. But if they say to me, because I really want to uh, share my stories, or I really want to, I, I, I loved acting when I was a kid in high school, and I'd love to continue. I just love being up there on stage or being in front mm-hmm. of the camera. Then I know that they're actually going that they're to serious that about they're serious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. And, uh, well, when I when I think about you know the actors 
who were around when when I was doing Young Doctors, the, the, the women, um, and, and out of sort of, out of all of us, probably Sigrid Thornton and Kerry Armstrong. Oh, I used to have a biggest crush on Sigrid Thornton. <laughs> Siggy was just well. See, she and Kerry were both in the Getting of Wisdom, and um, you know that they, they've not many others have had the sort of careers that they had that they've had and continue to have. But I'm sure they they would both say that they they've had you know period very quiet periods um, during their careers as well, mm. um, but. You know, it, luck does play a, a big part of it. I mean, I was incredibly lucky to to have been written into a show, mm. um, and it was, you know, it just as when I was sort of starting starting out, there were a lot of shows that were just about to start as well. So, you know, I went from show to show to show, and back again. I mean, Cop Shop, I did three stints in Cop Shop. I did two stints in Prisoner. I um, I did two stints in Carson's Law. Uh, so you know, there was a there was a lot happening, and there was a lot happening in Melbourne because of Crawford's. So um, it was a wonderful period. But of now, of course, with all the um, cable TV, there's a it, it's really ramping up again. Mm. But Unfortunately for me, it's not the best time to be a blue-eyed blonde because, quite rightly, um, you know there is there is a an interest in being more diverse in the casting, and so you know we're, we're moving away from that sort of the typical face that they used to use all the time. Yeah. Now, before we before we finish, though, Lisa, I want to ask you a couple of more questions about young doctors. So, first of all, yes. um, <laughs> now Albert Memorial Hospital, a lot of the, the interior scenes were in a studio, yeah. Yes, that was a studio in North Sydney. Mm -hmm. What? Um, where were the external scenes filmed? Well. We actually didn't do many external scenes. I mean, they used they used the car park of the studio quite often. Mm -hmm. um, I think there were some establishing shots done at Royal North Shore Hospital, but you know, we we had a low budget and it was very fast turn. We were producing five um, half hour episodes a week. Mm -hmm. That is unheard of now. So we did not go out of the studio very often. Um, I remember my, my first, my, it was my first ever kissing scene and it was with the man who then became my fiance, um, who was Peter Cousins, who, who did go on to have a fabulous career. Um, but we, so this was a, you know, Bunnies was the, you know, the nightclub that was also in the studio and we're walking home from Bunnings and he stops and, and kisses me. So in he stopped and kissed me in front of a flat that had kind of brick brick wallpaper on it. And then there were two two guys, two of the crew standing either side of this flat with the fake brick wallpaper on it, holding branches. To put in front of the light, so it, it looked like we were outside. Oh, okay. But you know that was in the studio. Wow. The um, the King's Cross nightclub. I don't quite know how they how they did it, but they actually got a VW into the studio, and that was the little car that hit Doctor Forrest. So not a lot of location work. Okay. Certainly not in my time. Maybe in, in later years, because of course, um, you know, I was probably there in the middle of it. Uh, but no, not a lot of location work. Right. Well, we are going to have to uh, have to finish the interview. I have had such a wonderful time talking to you, though. Um, and uh, but I just want to remind our listeners that you can get um, the Young Doctors uh, box set, which is. Um, 
the first 200 and what is it 250 250 two, episodes 250 and episodes uh, uh, available there's 35 discs in that box set you can get it from via vision is it via or via uh, it's sorry vision entertainment vision entertainment and JB Hi-Fi have it yep. and, and really anywhere that sells DVDs should have it and if they don't have it ask them why not and ask them to get it in exactly all right lisa thank you so much for your interview today thank you for ch chatting with me it's been absolute pleasure oh look it's been my pleasure and thank you so much for supporting us and oh, um, and promoting the young doctors and congratulations to on the radio station i did some i was reading up about what you guys are doing and it, it, it's 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 fabulous it's it's great that you got it up and running and that it, it's it's Oh, it looks like you're here to stay. Which we, is great. we we love this radio station, and um, I said to Tris, who who runs the station, I, I, I said to him a few weeks back, I said, you know, we're a family, you know, we, that's what we are, and uh, mm. I've, I've I've been on this, you know, I've run this particular radio uh, radio seg uh, segment, uh, that's entertainment, I've I've run that for now maybe about three months, four months. Mm. Uh, but I just love it. I just love this. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's what I do now. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Anyway, Lisa, thank you so much. And um, I hope to see you again on um, TV shows in the very near future. So do I, Brenton, and thank you. And um, maybe we can talk when they bring the next 250 episodes out. Definitely, definitely, and I'm sure they will. All right. Yes. All right, stay well, stay safe. All right, thanks, Lisa. Take care. All right, thank you too. You. Bye. Bye bye. So that was Lisa. Um, uh, Lisa Alden Alden. I can never pronounce her name. <laughs> Lisa Aldenhoven, such a lovely lady. Uh, she, yeah, played, she seemed quite nice. Yeah, she played Nurse Julian Holland in the, the Young Doctors. Um, so in the middle of the show, it ran for eight seasons, yeah. and she was in the in, somewhere in the middle there. Mm. Um, and as we saw earlier, she played you know her character. You know, just as she's about to say "I do," she gets shot. <gasps> And I d and now I know what happens. You know, I was, mm. I was like, "Oh no, got to find out what happened." <laughs> but she began acting as a child when she joined a, a drama group. She started off with non-speaking roles in shows such as Bellbird and did some filming for children's series Play School when she was a child. So, mm. um, and like you said in the interview, it runs in your blood. And clearly, it did. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. And she was, she was getting guest roles in series such as Cop Shop and Prisoner. You know, her first, her f as she said in the interview, her first um, r uh, first episode of Prisoner, she was in the, f the first episode, and by the, the third ad break, um, she was gone. She was, was, was hanging in the cell. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to watch that. Because yeah. I used to love Prisoner, mm. so I'm going to have to watch that because mm. I could, you know. Now I you can say you've talked to the. One Wentworth of the was okay. Wentworth mm. was okay, but I think Prisoner was, uh, in my opinion, Prisoner was better. Mm. I really enjoyed Prisoner uh, because yeah. I think you got to be, I think you got to love the characters more. Yeah. So there was a bit more like yeah. building of the characters yeah. and, and less. And, and, and of some of whom you felt sorry for because they mm. were in there for things that they you shouldn't have been in prison for. Something. Yeah, so uh, but yes, uh, uh, um, Lisa Aldenhoven, of course, uh, that, that was to uh, uh, about the DVDs uh, for Young Doctors, the, the first first box set um, uh, being available. I mean, it's been a couple of box sets for a couple of um, DVD things in the past, you know, the mm. Young Doctors 30th anniversary, which was a double disc that was d released in 2006. Uh, the Young Doctor's classic Cliffhangers was released in 2008. That had two discs, but this is the first box set. It's, it's of like episode the proper one through to 250. Mm. 35 discs. You can get that from Vision Entertainment uh, or JB Hi-Fi or Sanity Records mm. or anywhere that they sell uh, DVDs. DVDs. Mm. So... And mm. that's all we've got time for for yeah. uh, that's entertainment today. So on the count of three, Jared, yep. you know what we say. Yep. One, two, three. That's, that's entertainment. entertainment.